Hey, welcome to the January episode of Adam Bernstein's Contract to Close podcast. Adam, how are you today? I'm doing awesome. Working out of the Compass main headquarters in Aventura today. Well, hey, it's first uh, first show of the year. Might as well try a new location. Um, today, we're going to be talking about the difference between a condo buying and purchasing a single family home. You know, how often do you get a buyer who is trying to decide between two very different types of homes? As always, good question right out of the gate, 2021. Thank you, Pete. Uh, so for the last year, it's like I have to reference every question, and I hate it with this, hey, remember we're in COVID kind of times right now, um, and our market is not normal where most of our buyers are domestic right now and not international, okay? So with that being said, uh, the demand for single-family homes has been – astronomical, uh, mostly from the Northeast and a lot from California. Uh, the condos, uh, we are now in January 2021, uh, is starting to uptick because the inventory in single family homes is so low. How can you point to a specific date in, t in 2020 where you started to notice that or was it just a slow burn where, okay, we're out of inventory for single family homes. Now everybody is going to start to look back to condos. So it's been happening for the last like eight or 10 weeks now. So um, you could feel the shift. Uh, so if you know, if you want like the real information, the amenities and condos have been shut down for so long uh, that it was forcing a, uh, our renters that were renting in condos and our buyers to go to single family homes, townhomes, this type of product. Uh, the amenities are opening up. It's more of like a no longer first come first serve or just show up. Now it's a little more organized, you know, rent or this is open and this many people. Uh, but just having that, you know, um, being able to be scheduled now, the condo market is upticking. So you can find the deals in condos. There's a lot more inventory depending on your price point. You know, we're talking 400,000 to six, six to nine, nine to one point, whatever, and then one point, you know, to, you know, sky's the limit. How different does the price tend to be between a condo and a home? And, and what are some of the, the clear reasons for, you know, those differences? Now, in South Florida, you live in the ocean, price per square foot is more expensive, just like in California or living in New York or anywhere that touches water, you know, water is gold. Uh, then as you move further west, it gets less expensive. Um, so a really expensive price per square foot for South Florida, let's just say, is $1,500 a square foot to $2,500 a square foot. Now, that could be on the ocean in a condo or in a single-family home in Golden Beach, let's say. As you move towards the intracoastal, where there's a lot of condos and single-family homes, you see from $500 a square foot to $1,000 a square foot. And then as you move further west more inland i guess i would call it right you would start seeing prices of 350 200 250 you know in that kind of price range so it's all price per square foot relative meaning if you want to live on the ocean it's going to be very expensive and if you live further out west further from the ocean it's less expensive so a lot of like first time owners you know don't realize that a condo purchase is going to mean paying some sort of monthly fee for the condo association how much are those fees typically going to run per month? So for first time home buyers, it can be a little bit overwhelming. You need to have a good real estate agent like this guy uh, or somebody on my team, to be honest with you, uh, because in condos, it's, it's a different animal. You're dealing with a lot of financials um, and where they're at in their 40 year certification in Florida, meaning you know, what age is the building? So with that being said, and to answer your question, Maintenance fees are price per square foot as well. Like I just discussed in real estate, everything is price per square foot. Something expensive is a dollar a square foot or more. So if you have a 3,000 square foot apartment, it's a $3,000 a month maintenance bill. A traditional condo would probably be somewhere in the 30, 35 cent range uh, for mid-level. Uh, and somewhat a little more luxury is probably 50 cents a square foot to 60 or 70. Um, so that's kind of how it works in price per square foot world. It's Whatever your apartment is, and they'll tell you your price per square foot. You divide it by the monthly, and that's how you figure it out. That's the analytical way to do it. 
Now, how often can a condo association fees cost more than home insurance for you know, a single family home? I mean, you do you tell you there's like we could just make a whole podcast on just that type of two things. Like mm -hmm. South Florida is hurricanes and low lying water. So we get hit with a, a high flood and a wind premiums, insurance, single family homes, condominiums. That's usually wrapped up into your HOA fees, along with a lot of other stuff. So in a condo, pretty much just pay, let's say, five hundred dollars a month average in Aventura. Right. And that it would include your insurances and your water, hot water and everything except for your electric, let's say. Some building your electric's included as well. Depends on the building once again. Single family home, you gotta pay for your insurance. You gotta pay for your water most of the time, unless you live in a lake. Um, so those are just things to be wary of. And once again, you gotta get the right person. And it may be it's not me, it's somebody else, but somebody who has experience who can help you know what the pitfalls are out there when you're buying, especially in South Florida. If you're not from here and you're relocating. That's super important. Now, some single family homes, uh, say in a development, they can also have a homeowners association fee charged to them as well. Is that right? Yes. Well, of course, if you're in a gated community or there's amenities and, uh, you know, for those first time uh, podcast listeners, uh, I think right now I'm at 20 subscribers. Mm -hmm. But for oh, those, yeah. 20, you know, and, and we're moving up. Um, amenities, amenities, amenities in Florida, it's lifestyle. So if you want tennis courts, you want golf or you want security, it costs money, it costs money to have security, it costs money to have the insurance. Those things go in your HOA. It doesn't have to be ridiculous. Uh, in a community out West in Davie, where I used to live before it was not gated, it's $90 a month or $90 quarterly, super affordable. My current place where I live is $900 quarterly, which isn't crazy either. And that's a single family home gated community in Davie. That same thing east on the water would be $750 a month or, you know, something. So when you get close to the water, everything goes up. When you go out further west, things start to come down a little bit. Now, when you're living in a condo, it's community living because you're sharing walls with your neighbor. What are some other pros and cons of being in a condo? The, the the main pro or the main pros for most people why they buy in South Florida is the ease of locking the door and going home and not worrying about it and hiring a management company like me once again to you know help you manage your investment or your second or third home or whatever. Um, number two is security. You know you've got armed security down there, not armed meaning with guns, but you know, like in a house and then you walk into a lobby that's secured, so it's very secure. Number three is the amenities, card rooms, gyms, pools, lifestyle. Um, so that's condo living. You know, for a client who might be, you know, vague about their needs or unsure, you know, how much you know, prying do you have to do, or do you feel obligated to do? Do, do, do you want to find out if, if they want to live in a condo? Because it, well, you know, we just kind of talked about, there's some great amenities. There's, there's the security of having a doorman, but you're also you're going to see people in the hallway that, you know, maybe you don't like, or you, maybe you're not used to if you're coming from a single family home. So how much of a deep dive do you do to get to know your client before you say, okay, Hey, I really think you're a great fit for a condo, or maybe we need to move you to, a single family home out west. How many questions are we doing to like 15 questions? You and 15. I were, yeah, we jammed I, one in. They throw it out there. You and I could do 15 mini episodes in every question. So I'm gonna try to keep it short. But um it, this is a bad term, but it's uh, buyers are liars, okay? Meaning they don't tell you the truth. So once again, it goes back to experience. Asking some pointed questions, listening to your client. And trying to do the best you can. I got a lead three days ago through um, a referral source of Compass or whatever. And a, a nice customer who, who wants to purchase a single family home in Las Olas, which is very expensive. And they've been renting for three seasons. And the inventory is very low. And the uh, wife who, who I was speaking with wanted some condominiums to look at around that Las Olas area. So I sent her some. And she called me back and she said, Adam, thank you so much. I now realize I do not want to live in a condo. You have to find me a single family home. So 
she thought, you know what, let me, I, I probably want to be in a condo because we don't live here full time. I want to lock the door and maybe, but then she went up and down the block and she said, do I really know I want a backyard and I want to be there. Um, so find me that, you know, and that's a little more expensive, uh, single family home, but we'll, we'll make it happen. We'll find it for. Her. So what are, what are some of the costs associated with, you know, living on your own? We, we talked about having an HOA that you might not expect to have to pay for if you're in a condo, but you know, besides home insurance, what are some, what are some hidden costs for, you know, maybe that first time buyer that, that they might not consider when they are buying a single family home? If you're buying from a developer when it's new development, that could be very um, expensive if you don't know, because there's something that developers like to call upgrades, 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 right? And that can become costly. And then sometimes they don't use the best craftsmanship or the, the tools. or So you have to be careful of that with new development. Condominiums, you know, if you're buying pre-construction, you don't really know what the end product's going to look like and you don't know where maintenance fees are going to fall. So you have to kind of like ask these good questions ahead of time as well. And then, you know, when you're a single family home, you never know what's going to go. It could be a sprinkler. It could be a garage door. It could be a light. So you always have to just have a good maintenance or know what to do or call somebody that can help you like Adam Burstein again, you know, you just, you know there's so many first time home buyer. It's like, you got to buy the encyclopedia Britannica, which is like old school. And you got to just, you know, <laughs> just read and figure it out. Cause you learn every single day in real estate, even as an agent, every single day I'm learning from an experience, something I could not foresee, but that I learn and I hope to do better on the next one. So when you were considering new condo versus single family home, it sounds like we're sort of, you know, trading the responsibility of, you know, my lawn, other maintenance issues for, you know, not having to maybe right. check in with the condo association, like ask them questions like, Hey, I, I want to paint my, I want to paint my walls today, or I want to, I want to decorate this way or that way. Um, there's a little bit more of, um, you know, again, asking questions, asking permission rather for homeowners association. Is that right? Yeah. And, and, you know, I didn't really list a lot of cons when you asked me about condos. Uh, now, because of COVID, you know, I mean, getting into elevators can be a little confusing for people. Some people are, are a little more uh, sensitive than other people. Obviously, it's mask on all the time. Uh, sometimes it's a temperature check when you walk in the door. Single family home life, it's a little more like open your door, walk in your house, close your door. And people are, are uh, preferring that now more than they ever did. Um, but South Florida is built like New York, tall. You know, condos are, are a way of life for us here and we're all adjusting and making the necessary adjustments. So um, condos are a great way to live in South Florida. You know, you just got to be careful and really look at each condo individually and see what fits your needs. And then you, you make that go from there. Are you as an agent allowed to provide, you know, give me detailed info, feedback, gossip about, you know, HOAs in, you know, in a, in a building or you know, what you've heard, maybe, you know, positive or negatively or is that kind of off the table no i mean listen uh first as a real estate agent you have to act under you know uh your your moral guidelines anyway um so uh i never gossip or talk about things but if there's a pertinent fact to be disclosed i will definitely do it and because i treat all of my customers like if i was trying that you know like selling that property or buying that property i swear because i love real estate so i always look at it like if, it, if i put myself in your shoes, right? Um, I'm going to tell you probably more than I should sometimes, or, or, you know, definitely not less, you know, I'm going to give you the property history. I'm going to tell you where they're at. I'm going to let you know where they are, you know, and I'm going to try to give you as much information. So you're armed in a sense to make a educated decision at the end of the day. It's about educating yourself. It's point blank. For someone who's moving from single family to a condo for the first time, are there things that they don't know about living in a condo that they they're not going to find out until they've been in that particular building for a while. And you just say, Hey, like I can't explain this to you until you experience it yourself. You don't know what you don't know. Yeah. I mean, you just, older buildings have a smell in the hallways from cooking, you know, uh, newer buildings, you don't really get that problem, but maybe the neighbor above you uh, has a dance party with high heels on, you know, Condo living, you know, versus single family home. I live in a neighborhood where we have a little more uh, privacy and we can play our speakers a little more uh, loudly uh, in a condominium. You have to be, you know, uh, conscious of your neighbors. I mean, it's just, you know, it's about living in a community uh, with your fellow people and have respect for your neighbors. And if you do that, 
you'll, you know, if you're looking for problems, problems will find you. But if you're not, you know, you'll just move right straight, straight through. So is it easy to simplify and say, hey, condos, you're getting amenities, it, single family home, you're getting the privacy? Yeah. And I mean, in condos, there's so much more. You're getting, you know, you're getting amenities, you're getting security, you're getting ease of just closing the door and that secured feeling. Um, if you can stomach the HOA or the maintenance fees that are basically junk fees, the way that most of us feel because there's no appreciation, you know, it's just you're throwing it away, right? It's like a lease. Um, but if your building is managed right and you plan on living there or you want to make it an investment tool, you have to be careful where your HOA fees are. If you're very wealthy and you work in that upper echelon game, $3,000 maintenance fees and $5,000 maintenance fees sometimes don't affect people the same way it, it, it does some of us, right? And there, a $20 million apartment with a $5,000 a month maintenance fee with a $100,000 tax bill, there is a demand and a drive for that in South Florida, just like there is for somebody buying a $300,000 condo with a $400 maintenance fee. That hurts that person more at $400 a month than it does the other guy on that level. So, I mean, I work with people here and I work with people here and we just, you know, we got to advise you correctly. Condos are a good investment. Single family homes are great, but if you're not living here full time, can be a maintenance headache and nobody wants that, especially during hurricane season, which is literally six months of the year. Have you noticed any shift in marketing for condos or you know, new development itself and like, hey, we're gonna have X, Y, Z amenities that maybe we didn't have before because of you know what's transpired over the last eight months? I, I would say probably in condos are giving more incentives right now and single family home new developments are selling out like that. And if you buy a lot and you start building, you can flip it and make money before you even have to take a close if you have an assignable contract. So if you want to learn more about that, I'm your guy. Well, we can listen to this show on Spotify and Apple Podcasts as well as watch the video interview on YouTube. Adam, where can we connect with you for our condo and single family help? Uh, you can always find me at equityadvisorteam.com. That's my main website. Get on my email list. Uh, find me on uh, YouTube. Go to Adam Burstein. Subscribe. Uh, I'm at 20. Hopefully after this podcast, I'll be at 30. That's Big number. 30. I know, a 30. So uh, advisor at equity, equity advisor. Uh, you know how to look me up. 305-409-7556. Love you guys. Okay, Adam. Thanks so much for your time. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you, sir. Hey, 75 degrees in South Florida playing golf every day. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't talk to you soon. All right. Up and at them.